Hi, this is Chris Howard, host of Plugged In with Chris Howard. BetOnline is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contests, odds, and lines right up to the national championship game. BetOnline is your number one source for all your college basketball wagering. Head to BetOnline today. Stay updated on all the action. BetOnline, the game starts here. Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. Welcome to CarCast. I'm Matt, the moderator, DeAndre, here with Bill Goldberg out of Texas. What's going on? Are you guys getting some weather? Like, No, man. The only weather we're getting right now is 100 degrees constantly with about 100% humidity. But, you know, we'll take it. I, I thought, At least it's not fires. It's not a freaking hurricane. I, it's I mean, not- both of those things are, are terrible right now. The hurricanes, the fire. I was talking to Aaron Hagar oh. at Tahoe and... Oh. They they evacuated him. He tried to pack up so much stuff that he had, and uh, you know, he Aaron's a sweetheart of a guy, and he's got a big background in you know his his art background, but in film and television, so he's got all his his home office is just full of like creatures and things that he's made, and for you know, it's all just one off stuff. He was Sorry. able to pack up some of that stuff but then when he went to his shop his car shop he's like i can't i can't do anything he tried to get some friends to move some cars and then but everything was just was just packed so we're just crossing our fingers that everything's going to be okay for for him and the others in that area but uh he just had to hightail it out i think he just went uh i think he just drove out to his dad's house up in marin county just try to get out there i thought you would guys would get some of that no I thought you guys would get some of that hurricane weather too, because it's it, you know it's massive and it's spread and it's I mean the damage it's doing, but it's going to go like halfway through the country. So uh, yeah, I, it's a little east of us. Yeah, I figured it might be a little bit east, of, but who knows? It's it's where you are. It's a hundred degrees now. It may pour and rain three days from now. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to complain, dude. You know, with all the bullshit going on in the, in the world. Oh no, no, no. Uh, it it's a uh, it's pretty nutty what's going on. So uh, anyway, so the big news we're going to get into is, uh, is, is Ford Raptor stuff, but I want to hear about your car. Before we get uh, started here, let me tell you guys about the Craig Pocket Hole Jig 520 Pro. So now uh, anyone can easily create perfect, strong pocket hole joints with the Craig Pocket Hole Jig 520 Pro. 520 Pro. This is the most versatile pocket hole jig yet. If you guys do some woodworking, you might want to check this out. It works with a variety of materials, and it's great for all types of indoor and outdoor wood projects. The Craig Pocket Hole Jig 520 Pro comes with everything you need. It's got the drill and the driver bits, material gauge, a Craig Classic face clamp, 100 Craig Pocket Hole screws, and a project plan. It retails for just $99.99. It's available at Home Depot, Lowe's, and other home centers and woodworking uh, places and hardware stores, pretty much anywhere you'd expect to get something like this. They have it. So build pocket hole projects anytime, anywhere. Learn more at craigtool.com. That's K-R-E-G tool.com. Oh, so you got one of the cars back. You got the you got the charger because well, uh, we had a couple I, projects I, I, out. <laughs> I completely forgot about this. No, um, you know uh, you know the deal, man. Because uh, you had the red eye, you had the, yeah. the nickel red eye that was getting a little bit of work done, and we talked about a second round of TRX stuff that's going to happen soon, going from the supercharger to the turbos, and then of course the big car was the charger, the twin turbo, fifteen hundred horsepower parachute wide body this is the one that uh, dave salvaggio did the crazy carbon fiber and the nice paint which i love it has the mat and it has the satin and the gloss and the red stripe and which is a really good looking car by the way so thank you what they, they did they did a hell of a job man but you know it had been the speed core it had been the salvaggio shop it had been the gearheads i don't know where the hell else it had been but the fact is is Yes, there were a couple other projects that were done while that was being completed. But, um, you know, there's good things and bad things that had taken so long. It, 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 for instance, it sat for so long that, you know, Boost Lab came out with bigger turbos. So what do you do? You yeah. upgrade to the newer, bigger turbos while it's sitting there. 
And then, you know, it was sitting for a while. So what do we, what do we do? Well, uh, Turbo 400 comes up to be an option. So, you know, pull everything out and put the Turbo 400 in and get everything else matted to it and take it out and spin a bearing and then pull the motor. You know, it's just, a, it's, a, it's an endless, an endless circle. But the fact is that I finally got it back and the son of a bitch is absolutely <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> but, I mean, it only brings a huge smile to my face. I need a runway so that I can take this car out and see what it's got and not kill myself against the guardrail or another person driving in the lane next to me. But yeah. um, needless to say, you know, I mean, I actually, I took it and got it tagged yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, had to, I had to take the parachute off the back. <laughs> but yes, I, I, had, I got it tagged. Love California. I mean, I love Texas. Um, you know, it's bitch and it's got the, the, the automatic cutouts, right? In the front. Yeah. Know, right. 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 Off. So the, so the, the twin quiet. turbos, the twin yeah. turbos are mounted up sort of in the front corners of the front bumper. So you'll see the exhaust, but then it has, uh, I don't know, sort of, a, I guess kind of, uh, I don't know if it's like a blow off valve or something, but you can see the pipes coming off the front bumper. Right. Yes, now, you can. And when you open them up, it's it's extremely freaking loud, especially if you sit next to a police. But you know, um, so wait, it, it does it have a full exhaust, and then those are just the and those are separate cutouts. So if you want to just open it up and just dump the turbos right out the front, you can. You can do it. it yeah. It, is the full exhaust much quieter? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now the turbos act as a bit of a muffler already. So if you if so so the cutout is it's going directly to the turbo and then just to a dump pipe that's it so the turbo is the only muffler when you're using the cutouts right and then so it's got a little bit but it's not full straight pipe but it's as close to straight pipe as you can but with the turbo on there it's and then it goes to the, to the full exhaust and what and then the full then the then the turbos go straight to my my esophagus yeah know, right so. <laughs> I, yeah it's a great um, feel. Okay, so and and then what's the wheel and tire setup on this? Uh, we got it's a it's a it's a weird deal, right? I mean, it's set up as a street car in the front and it's set up as a track tr- car in the back. So we got Ford's lines, twenties in the front with middos, you know, two ninety fives, um, and then seventeens in the back with uh, Mickey Thompson three twenty five. Uh, 50 R's or 57, 50 R17s. So it's got a drag radial in the back. Uh, yeah, I don't, I think radial is used <laughs> extremely loosely here, but yeah. I think it's a drag tire with slits in it, basically. Yeah. But, you know, Nitto doesn't have anything comparable that, that's going to fill the, fill the, uh, the, the wheel compartment. So yeah, I'm no, working on another tire package of that. We got HREs on the way you know, twenties all the way around to make it, you know, look like a street car. But, um, it, I mean, it, it, with these drag radio, Mickey Thompson's on the back right now. I mean, they break loose in every gear, uh, under a hundred miles an hour. So the car is absolutely terrifying. I'm going to have to learn how to drive a turbo because when that thing comes on, it's like, you know, hell hell's about to break loose and it, and every, then everything does break. loose. <laughs> yeah. But and, let's and, just say that I made a I made a terrific decision not to take it to Detroit and go up against the winner of the influencers, the drag race out there. Yeah, um, I, it, it wouldn't have been a good situation by any stretch of the imagination. So. Now, for for look for any car, especially with something that extreme, you, you've really got to get some seat time and, and kind of ease into it, and then just start to you got to really start to understand what the car is capable of look there's a bunch of new cars on the road from the factory that you got to have to kind of understand what they're capable of but that thing is oh the uh, biggest the biggest is, is issue here is the tur- the biggest issue here is the turbo 400 right i've never had a turbo 400 it's got you know uh, release or, or reverse pattern on it so mm-hmm. you know the biggest issue is not dropping it down into gear you know when you're one to upship so I, I, I just, I've got to learn the idiosyncrasies of the car. Um, this is kind of an odd question because I haven't really thought about this yet. You've been doing so much work on the property, but is, 
is your whole like long driveway from the house to the garage to the gate is that paved road or not? Oh yeah, it is it's paved. paved. Okay, it's, but it's only one lane and it's a skinny lane. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and you know, hopefully the car is loud enough. It makes the wildlife want to not be in the middle of the road. <laughs> uh, no, they don't care. They, they don't care. care. <laughs> They're on their own agenda. The the loudness of the motor uh, does nothing for them whatsoever. They could care less. Well, at least it's paved because I was just imagining just like the slicks just picking up every rock and pebble and just smashing it and turning it into big giant rolling pieces of sandpaper. <laughs> oh, pretty rock. much because they've redone <laughs> they've redone my road. Yeah, you know, within the last two weeks. So yeah, well, yeah, they should have made it I wider. Got, <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of I got a lot of uh, things working against me. I I got it delivered. It started raining immediately. Yeah, right after I took it out for a yeah. test. Drive. So, I mean, that that ended very quickly. Now, you know, I've got to get my hand, uh, my hands on some race fuel because it's tuned for 114, one ethanol, one, one ethanol R, right? So mm-hmm. um, they're a sponsor of mine. So we're trying, we're, we're trying to get a couple pallets out here. But in the meantime, I can't drive the car. You know, it's tuned for one, four, 114. And I, I mean, I put I put a little bit of E85 in it, but we're going to have to change the tune if I put any more in it. So I'm just going to wait and, and run the run, uh, run the one R and uh, go out and have some fun, man. But I, I I I can't understate the fact that Gearhead did one hell of a great job on this vehicle. I mean, it, it's it's an absolute dream. It's kind of a Frankenstein car, right? You know, um, with the the wheel tire setup we have right now. And then the fact that, you know, we, we did the full KW suspension all the way around. Yeah. Um, so, but it's not set up specifically as a drag car. So it's got a life of its own. I mean, it's kind of a Frankenstein car. I mean, I can drive it on the road, drive it on the street. I can drive it straight to the track and go down and hopefully pull eights in it, you know? Um, so. Right. So, and then now you're, you're, you said HRE, uh, making some wheels and you're going to do a street wheel and tire package, the twenties, big, whatever as wide as you can yeah. get in the rear 100%. with, you know, just whatever, uh, sort of over the counter nitto, I guess, drag radial or something that they have for it. They probably have like a three or something. Yeah. You know, something they, like that. They've got a, they've got a three fifteen, and they have, a, they actually have a three twenty five. Um, I think it's in a 17 inch wheel. So, oh, okay. So, uh, you're going to run the 17s, or you're going to put 20s on all four? Oh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, excuse me. The HREs, yeah, it'll be 20s all the way around. Right. So it'll be a three. It'll be a 315, 40, 20. Yeah. Right. Okay. That makes that makes sense. Uh, Well, it sounds it sounds interesting. How's the cage? Can you get in and out of it? Gage is awesome. It's the it looks good actually, in some of the photos. To be honest with you, man, as I sat in the all-wheel drive uh, carbon fiber twin turbo that they did years ago. Yeah, a couple years ago. Booth, mm-hmm. uh, I booth. I remember distinctly that it was a breeze to get in and out of. Once you take the, the bar out. Yeah, the side, um, side bar. The side bar out, it, it's, it's like it's not even in there. To be perfectly honest, you yeah. do not even notice it. It's absolutely a, a, a fabulous job that they did. Um, it's like it's not even there. So you've got uh, you've got this car back, which is exciting, which uh, we got to get some photos and stuff of it. I don't know if it's going to SEMA or what the plan is with it at this point. Or is, there, is it going to be a public debut? Looks like it's going to go to SEMA, I, I, I would imagine. I'm going to debut it. You know, I've. The weather's broken a little bit, and I'll get some time. I'm going to shoot some videos and take it out and beat it up a little bit, post it up on uh, Goldberg's Garage on YouTube. But, um, yeah, I'll get some photos of it. I- I'm going to take it in the shop and get her cleaned up and get some presentable photos. But, yeah, um, yes, I, the video of me smoking the tires will be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you got this car. You got this car back. You've got uh, – uh, You've got the red eye as well. Yes, sir. Man, Wanda's Porsche will be done this week. So, yes, uh, I'll be putting car on top of car on top of car. And, and oh, lo and behold, I already reserved a, another storage spot. So let's get Goldberg's Garage going, please, dear God, Metron. <laughs> um, we close. We're getting there. I got power, uh, uh, all the, the 
the work order done for the power and that's that's nice and cheap and can't wait <laughs> to get the well dug that's nice and cheap and it is what it is but that's good right thing come to those who wait that's right you better get back in the ring <laughs> yeah well <laughs> october 21st it looks like yeah. Well, listen, like Gage is 15 now. He's been in the ring. He can start covering some bills. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No question. Put him to work. Yeah. Put I him need to, to work. be a fan of for sure. Uh, all right. So let's uh, – let me tell you guys about this uh, good guys thing real quick because uh, we love these guys. Good Guys Rod and Custom Association is coming to uh, Loveland, Colorado for the 23rd Colorado Nationals presented by Griot's Garage. It's at the uh, the Ranch Events Complex, uh, September 10 through 12. There's over 2,000 classic cars and trucks on display with an autocross burnout competition. There's vintage drag racing exhibition as well. Check out the huge swap meet with a specialty auto auction. You can bring the whole family. There's a live entertainment, a model and pedal car display, and a big uh, free kids zone. Uh, let's see. There's uh, tickets on sale now. It's at goodguys.com. It's good-guys.com. If you use promo code CARCAST, you get $5 off your ticket. Kids under six can get in for free, but use promo code CARCAST at goodguys.com to get $5 off. So check that out. Uh, all right. So new Ford Raptor. We knew the Raptor was coming out and the, the word was, was, they're going to have a new Raptor come out now with the same 450 horsepower engine. Great. And then possibly next year, a Raptor R with the supercharged <laughs> V8. Yeah. And uh, the, the, basically the embargo has been lifted on the first, uh, you know, driving event, off-road event for the, uh, for the Raptor. I want and, to see the sales numbers on this one. And uh, uh, listen, I, Hey, we're obviously fans, right? Here's the deal. It's like Raptor came speak, out speak for yourself. and TRX came out. I love the rivalry between them. I love the competition for it. it. It's it's fun for the brand having a halo truck and people have fun with these trucks. You know, the T-Rex with the, you know, under the hood where the T-Rex eats the Raptor. It's all just fun kind of kind of and, stuff. And so. Uh, and listen, we we get to reap the benefits, right? We get to enjoy all these fun trucks. Uh, but that being said, so the biggest difference are is uh, some suspension upgrades, which we expected, and the elimination of the leaf spring in the back, and they went to a coil spring. This is what the Ram has already been doing, right? And the the Ram models and the TRX specifically have already benefited from that. So uh, this has the coil spring in the rear, some more revisions. I think it's a, it's a, it's a progressive spring, but it's sort of a, instead of a two way, I think it's three way. It has sort of three different variations on the coil spring, uh, a lot more control over the high speed, you know, off road, like the high speed whoops, um, it it digs in more at squats and digs in more on acceleration. Uh, it's a smoother ride overall, so it's got some pretty pretty cool benefits to that. Um, of course, for the truck styling on the interior, it brings that new F one fifty. You know all of those elements and the power ports and the twelve point whatever inch screen. I think it's twelve point three inch screen, and uh, it's got some pretty uh, pretty cool stuff. It's got the you know, the sync four and wireless smartphone connectivity. Uh, I don't know what your truck has, your TRX has, but the Raptor does have a 36 gallon fuel tank, which on a highway, you can get a 500 mile range out of it. That's good. I like the idea. Like I, I'm not, I don't know what the fuel economy is. Who cares? The point is, is 43 gallon tank, 43 gallon tank is, if you can get somewhere around that 500 mile range out of a tank, it's just about getting to your destination, especially if you're going to go off for the weekend or something and fewer stops at the gas station, which are just inconvenient. So, well, if we're shooting for 500 miles, I'm going to need to put, I'm going to need <laughs> well, you're to put not five in the bed of my truck, in the entire bed of my truck. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the, the dually that we have over here has the big fuel tank. And then we added a 50 gallon, 
uh, a you know stainless tank in the bed of the truck. <laughs> I put a fifteen gallon reservoir uh, over the the passenger hump in the the, the uh, bed of the TRX. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hundred percent. Uh, uh, so let's see what else we got. Um, I, they didn't do any towing or anything at this particular event. It's just a spec that they'll get into later. Uh, lots of great images of the thing flying through the air. Um, all the high speed video stuff. Uh, I don't get the timing, right? I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going to push that vehicle out with, with the, the playing field, the way that it's set up right now. Well, so here's the deal is the timing is a little bit out of their control. So they did the, the press event and then it's going to be a little while before they roll that out. Now, keep in mind, we're still hitting this chip shortage uh, across vehicles everywhere. So, uh, you know, if they said, Hey, here's the announcement and you're going to, you're going to get it in 30 days, that's probably not going to happen. Now they are priori- uh, prioritizing, uh, the chips that are coming in for the high volume vehicles, things like F one fifties and transit vans and stay Maki that, you know, a few things like that. So uh, actually I thought this was going to come out a little bit sooner um, mm-hmm. and be available this year. But uh, I think uh, part of the delay has been, you know, they don't want to announce this thing, you know, in, in July officially, and then say, Oh, it's going to be in September. And then in September, nobody can, can get it. So, uh, here's something that's interesting though. You can get it with standard 35 inch tires or optional 37s. Now, the interesting thing is, cause we had this discussion is Cars are so uh, complicated today with cameras and sensors and all kinds of stuff that what we're running into is when you lower a car or even lift a car, it starts to throw off all these cameras and sensors. You know, I talked about uh, Audi and Bentley uh, uses cameras and sensors, and when a car is coming toward you, uh, it'll hit the brakes. It thinks it's a safety thing. When you're trying to do a left-hand turn, it's very frustrating because if you're trying to beat the car coming at you, it jams on the brakes and stops the Why car you in the turn intersection. All that shit off. I wish you could, but you can't. You know, uh, so I was talking to someone that were like, "Oh yeah, we, you know, we we were doing some experimenting with you know with an aftermarket company. They they lowered quite a bit in Audi, and it wouldn't move." Because it, the cameras saw the ground or whatever things, so it just threw off. And the car, it would fire up and everything, but it kept hitting the brakes. It's like danger, danger. I thought it was like <laughs> running into a wall or something. So that wouldn't do it. And there are companies that are taking, uh, you know, trucks, uh, you know, and lifting them. Just saying, hey, you know, people are going to lift them with a tire package or 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 some sort of lift kit or whatever. And uh, it's throwing off all the sensors. It 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 can't gauge the distance and stuff. Got to just got to get them adjusted. I did the exact same thing on the on the TRX with the ADD bumpers. And, and but not everything is programmable in that sense right because some of them have more complex things like the audi thing because it's tied into the brakes is more complex right? 100%. you know and i would expect look you expect some companies like ford and ram and stuff to they oftentimes embrace the aftermarket more than let's say i don't know audi or, or ferrari or whatever right there's yeah. a lot of things that are modified But it gets to be more complicated. Anyway, the point being, if you want the 37s, having it as a factory option means it's going to be programmed for the 37s, right? So there is a slight benefit to that, being able to say, hey, if if something isn't programmable – and I'm not just saying compared to a TRX. I'm just saying compared to – uh, doing the aftermarket change on your own later. If you can go into a dealer even and say, hey, I want to do the 37s. Is there a way to reprogram the stuff? The answer is probably going to be yes, right? So I would imagine Ford's going to say, hey, if you want to get the 35s, get them. If you want the 37s, get them. But if you get the 35s and you want the 37s, 
there's got to be some way for your dealer to go, no problem, we can we can fix it. We can make it work. 100%. Right? Yeah. And, and that's cool. Like, that's the kind of stuff we're looking forward to is for the manufacturers to be able to support dealer options and dealer upgrades and aftermarket upgrades and say, don't worry money about it. In their pocket. You know. Yeah, right. And also, that's what we want to do is personalize our shit. So why we, why not support it? It's a massive <laughs> business. We're going to the SEMA show. It's a $46 billion business because we want to all personalize our shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right? This is what we talk about here all the time. Uh, anyway, so we got uh, uh, Raptors front suspension is new as well. It's, at, uh, it's got 14 inches of travel on that on that front suspension which is uh, an inch more than the Ram TRX. And one less in the rear. And uh, I think so. Um, <laughs> they did some new things as well, some new aluminum steering knuckles, optimized ball joint uh, range of blah, motion, blah, lots blah, of stuff. Blah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, yeah, we'll get into They're it more. They're not going to sell many of these because yeah. everybody, why would you buy this if you're waiting for the, for the R, right? I, that's, a, that's a good question. So it's I, no sense to me. I, I guess, but, but it's a timing thing, and it's not like they did this on purpose, but I'm just predicting the future here. I'm just going to say that they're not going to sell many of them. I, like, it's interesting. I, I don't know. Um, if, if the R is going to be harder to get, and if the R, I dare I say, has a ridiculous dealer markup on it, uh, that's going to change things. By the way, Raptors right now, used ones are ridiculously expensive. Like anything, like used ones, even four, five, six years old, they're getting a lot of money for these things. Anything right now yeah. used is getting a lot of money, especially specialty vehicles. Like I, I Listen, I would argue if you're looking for a Raptor as an everyday vehicle and then you go out on the weekends and have some fun with it, the EcoBoost version with the 35s could be the way to go. Better, better gas mileage, easier to drive. Uh, you know. Yeah. You know. Again, I agree with that. Maybe not it's as on much. The price point. Yeah, right. And maybe not as much fun as as what the R is going to be. But the R is meant to be a, a an animal, right? It's meant to be a, a big. A big beast of 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 a vehicle. So, anyway, it it seems cool. It seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm interested in checking it out. I, I, I think that um, the new F one fifty really kind of caught up with Ram on Ram's uh, split screen and the interior, and and so I think both of those things are great on on the inside. Um, the suspension's great on these things. And now we get to play around and have more head-to-head competitions between these two trucks and see how they're going to go. Listen, we're Silverado in this mess. Come on, guys. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, you know, uh, Chevy needs to up their game on this, I think. I, I, you know, I haven't really dug into it too much. I'm sure there's various off-road packages. and it, Nothing you know, comparable. It, nothing from the factory. I'm, I, you know, I'm sure there's a handful of, of, of aftermarket companies that have tons of uh, parts for this thing, but where's kind of the jumping off point from the factory, like the Raptor and the TRX? Um, anyway, it should be it should be fun. I would say uh, check out um, check out Auto Blog. Follow Dan Edmonds, by the way. Dan Edmonds is a friend of ours. He's a good dude, and he's a suspension super nerd. And uh, he he posted specs and his evaluation on uh, on Auto Blog. Uh, and he does it better than than anybody out there. When you start to get into really the, you can you can choose how much detail you want, how much, how little, or how much detail you you want. <laughs> but but his stuff when it comes to suspension, especially, and this truck is something he's been waiting to get his hands on. Uh, he did such a great job of this, so I appreciate that, uh, Dan, uh, getting into that. So, uh, okay, so, let's see what else uh, we got next. Uh, but not to harp on all Ford stuff, but Ford Mustang Mach E, uh, the electric vehicle, it's been out. And what we're finding with a lot of companies is, is instead of instead of doing a a vehicle and keeping that model for you know five years and then refreshing it and keeping it for a few more years and then it does a you know eight or ten years later it gets a whole new platform. What we're seeing is is slight changes each year to keep the cars better, right? So now what we're seeing is, you know, a 2021 Mustang Mach-E, it's great. 
expect a little improvement in 22, a little more in 23, a little more in 24. And most vehicles seem to be going in that direction, whether it just be software updates or over-the-air software updates. A lot of times cars can be retrofitted now. They say, hey, the 23 model has has this and this, but don't worry, the 22s, we're just going to zap your car with the over-the-air update while you're sleeping, and you'll get the benefit as well. Uh, so what they're figuring out was the Mustang Mach-E was in some instances overbuilt, like its cooling systems and things like that. Uh, and it not necessarily needs all of the things that it currently has, not things that you would ever notice, just hidden underneath the vehicle. So the point being is, is, is what they're trying to do is longer range, more efficient versions of the Mach-E. They can do it with software updates, over-the-air software updates. But what they're finding is is some of the cooling system has some some extra long uh, hosing and, and wiring and stuff like that, which they can start to reduce, which cuts weight. That's going to be one of the benefits. So the big three, th- three big things that they're going to start to optimize would be uh, more efficient software, more efficient batteries, the, the chemistry of these batteries, and then weight reduction. And between those three things, we'll get slightly lighter, more efficient, longer range EV and arguably higher performance versions, right? Like we already know we're reducing weight. Uh, you're going to get better performance overall. And especially where you reduce the weight. Is it sprung weight? Is it unsprung weight? How low is it? How high is it? Just where the weight is. So it's pretty pretty interesting stuff. Uh, it'll get a little bit better and better over time, which is which is uh, which is cool. Just want to take another quick moment to talk about Craig, their uh, pocket hole jig five twenty pro. Now anyone can easily create perfect, strong pocket hole joints with pocket hole jig five twenty pro. It's the most versatile pocket hole jig yet. It works with a, v- a wide variety of material and it's great for all types of indoor and outdoor wood projects. The Craig pocket hole jig five twenty pro comes with everything you need: drill and driver bits, material gauge, a Craig classic face clamp. The uh, 100 Craig pocket hole screws and a project plan. It retails for just $99.99, and it's available nationwide at Home Depot, Lowe's, and other home centers, woodworking stores, hardware stores, pretty much anything that sells this kind of stuff, you'll be able to find it. It's the pocket hole jig. Uh, it, it's uh, it's great for uh, all pro- sorts of projects, anytime, anywhere. You can learn more at Craig Tool. Dot com. That's K R E G tool dot com. I was thinking a little bit about this back in the in the day when uh, uh, building ramps in uh, in the front of my cul de sac and you know building ramps and getting the BMX bike and trying oh, to yeah. you know and and just sitting there going oh you know you get the cinder blocks and you kind of just lean the the wood up and it, it was a danger every time right you think the bro- the blocks are going to fall over so if you're going to build yourself a dangerous ramp for your childhood uh, friends <laughs> you should get this thing <laughs> yeah and build a proper ramp and uh, get the joints uh, uh, butted up against each other. Just anything with woodworking that requires joints. Don't don't just think you can just screw things together. Like just stick like just just screw it in from from the top of the piece of wood and just think that that's a safe <laughs> joint. It's not. It's, it's not, not strong. It's not going to work. That's why. Like now that I've learned about the pocket hole, it's just it's so much. It, the, the screw just grabs so much more meat and it's just so much more stable. Like I'm I'm personally building uh, like acoustic panels for my studio. I was going to ask because you've got your shop. Yeah. Right, your place that uh, you've uh, you sometimes you rent it out. You have companies come in, yeah. and I don't know if they mess around or have to build anything temporarily. Well, let's or- just say I've I've built <laughs> I've built acoustic panels before, just just going the sh- the the uh, the screw just like a ninety degree angle right into right into the other piece of wood. Yeah, it splits every time. It splits. <laughs> it doesn't even. It looks bad. Like and it yeah. just, it's not strong. Like they they break on me all the time. But now that I'm doing the pocket hole, it's it's cool because the screw's kind of hidden. Because it's at an angle, right. and and it's just a stronger joint, so it just 
and, it's, it, and, and it's it looks like I know what I'm though. doing. <laughs> right. And, <laughs> and, and, right. It looks like you know what you're doing. And it's precise. Even when you drill the hole, when you do that 90 degree, it's so tough to get that bit, the drill bit, just to go uh, uh, straight in yeah. right through the middle, especially if the wood's kind of thin. And then when you put the screw in there, it splits. It still splits. Even when you drill the yeah. hole, it always screws it up. So, so I went to uh, I went to CraigTool.com and I, I looked and I, I saw like, oh, you can make bookshelves with pocket holes. So I'm, I'm going to make my own bookshelf now. <laughs> now you're going to be building all kinds yeah. of stuff. Well, you can come over to my garage and build stuff there too. Damn. <laughs> I've got uh, uh, I got some, some, some shelving and some racks so I can just store more and more like uh, car parts and stuff over there. So it, I was thinking about it. It could be, it could be a project to take on. I've got the, the Craig, uh, the pocket hole jig uh, over at the shop, and I was messing around with it the other day. I was like, mm, this thing's this thing's pretty cool, and uh, I'm gonna have to start getting into it a little bit more because I think it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be exactly what I need over in that shop. Yeah, it's really easy to use. So I mean, I think you and I should get together, have a building day. Let's just, let's <laughs> I just, know. That's, or well, if you want to start a furniture company or something. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Right okay. now we're, we're we've got other projects going on, <laughs> but I feel like that could happen. Uh, all right, so just a quick reminder: go to craigtool.com. It's k r e g tool.com. Uh, let's see what else is uh, going on in the in the world. I've been uh, oh, the guys at uh, at at Edmonds. I think we're going to have Alistair on next week. Alistair's been having fun with Porsche Macan and Tesla Plaid and just doing some some crazy stuff above and beyond his his normal testing and reviewing because <laughs> he's been testing some crazy stuff. So we'll talk to Alistair next week. But uh, his guys uh, went out to Willow Springs and had a little head-to-head competition, a little bit of fun. They took the BMW M4 and they put it up against the Mustang Mach 1. And I, I know the guys at Edmonds get uh, – get their balls busted all the time on these drag racing videos, especially Alistair because he kept driving the GT500. And they're like, you don't know how to drive it. There's better traction there because they get – it's tough to get the cars to hook up. Listen, who am I talking to? You just – you got a 1,500-horsepower charger. That's that's another thing. That's <laughs> another plus with it being gone for so long. Yeah. It gained – it gained 200 more horsepower, so we're at 1,700 now. <laughs> All right. well, that- I asked them if they wanted to keep it another month and make it a cool 2,000. But yeah, uh, I know. We're good at 17. All right. Well, we'll we'll conservatively keep it at 17 on the on the good race gas. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. So these guys went out. They had a, they created a fun video. You should check it out. And. Uh, they they put it around the course out there. They did some drag racing videos, the Mach 1 and the M4. And the M4 was beating it. But this is the funny part is we've always sort of thought as some of the German cars, the European cars, as the cars that would just outhandle anything we had here domestically. Just a round of road course, the handling performance would just kick our butts. But when it just came to raw horsepower, muscle, and drag racing, you just can't beat our muscle cars, right? Like it just it just seemed to be the way. You would never think Porsche 911 versus Dodge Challenger and expect the Challenger to to get around the road course faster. You would just expect the Porsche to whoop it all day long. But then – you know, on the straightaway, you just expect that Challenger to just be a beast and go way past uh, the Porsche. And it's funny how the the tides are turning a little bit because these guys took it out to there. And that M4 was beating the uh, the Mustang Mach 1 in the drag race. Now, keep in mind, a little bit lighter and a little bit more horsepower. It's like 480 horsepower versus 503. And it's like, I don't know, like a 200-pound difference somewhere around there. So it adds up that the M4 would would be faster. The, the one thing in their video is they said that uh, the M4 had launch control and the Mach 1 doesn't have launch control. But the M4 or, or the Mach 1 does have a drag race mode, which should have a launch control in it. So maybe something in the video uh, just got edited a certain way. I wasn't exactly sure how he was launching it. But I think the point was is he just wanted to do it by his foot and the feel of it and see if he can get it to hook up. Obviously, getting it to hook up was was an issue. So the M4 beat the Mach 1 uh, every time in the drag race. 
But then when they hit the the road course and they they publish the numbers, they're like, yeah, it's a little weird. But the Mach One was smoking that M4, which was lighter and had more horsepower. When you put that much tire underneath uh, the the Mustang and uh, and the the suspension, how tunable it is, it, it ended up being. Uh, uh, faster on the car. It's just kind of funny to me that now the Mustangs outhandle BMWs, but the BMW is a little quicker in a drag race. I'm fine with that scenario. I'm perfectly fine with that scenario. 100%, because, because, because that's what we've been trying to do for the past 10 years is get around a road course. Yeah, and adding horsepower is easy. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> right? Like, the, keep in mind that Mach 1 is still naturally aspirated. You know, you talked about turbos, talked about supercharger, even. You know, even just uh, doing some some slight engine mods, a tune, and a couple things. Yeah, yeah, easy to add some horsepower there. So it'll be fun. Now, I I posted a couple pictures of my Mach One, but I didn't even take those pictures because my car has been at MagnaFlow getting uh, the exhaust done. They were doing the R and D on the exhaust. I posted the uh, the pictures and I posted the sound clip, but I haven't even heard it in person. That somebody sent me the sound clip. And now it's well, that, is at, it the X mod? The X mod? It is, and actually, I don't even know how it's configured yet. I haven't had a chance to talk to Richard Wade, so I don't know. Well, you better talk to him because you'll have three options, right? I know, three and I don't know, option <laughs> I don't know what option is on there. I don't know what's on there. I don't know what's on there. I don't know if I he's got. Tell you what, I can tell you what's on the TRX. You got three guesses. I put the delete everything. Delete. <laughs> That's what. It, that's an easy the one. Guy, the guy, the guy from Auto Curators, calls and he goes, "Hey man, we're putting your exhaust on. I just got a question for you." I'm like, "Dude, are you even? What are you thinking? <laughs> calling me and asking me a question that is so quite obvious, right? It's right. Just wasting your time." Uh, so, so I, you're it's right. Bad, it's badass. I got it installed the TRX two days ago, and then the sound is fantastic. I'm going to put a clip up. Oh again, yeah, yeah. We got to hear that. It, it's great, man. What a difference. So, Huge uh, difference. Again, check out the YouTube channel, Goldberg's Garage on YouTube. You're going to be doing more and more content up there, so that's going to be exciting to do. But you're right. I don't know which exhaust. I don't know if it has the delete pipes or not the delete pipes. It's got the resonators and whatever. I do know that the valve, they did their version of the valve. The valve all works, and, and it sounds good. Uh, it's It wasn't really about – a. it's not just about a volume thing. It's about a particular tone, and it's just sort mm-hmm. of a preference. Uh, so I'm hoping to get that back. And then no secret that the car is over at Anderson Composites and they're doing a little R&D over there. They asked to borrow the car. I said, fine, so take all the time you need. And I'm trying to be as nice about it as possible because I like those guys a lot. But I am a little bit jonesy to see my car. I, have, I haven't – I drove it – from uh-huh. I drove I it from Galpin. This is I feel your pain. I feel your pain. But I I drove it from Galpin home, and then I drove it to Anderson Composites, and I haven't seen it since. <laughs> and uh, and that's it. And Magnum. Oh, I I took it out to Anderson Composites, talked with the guys, put together a little bit of a plan, and then I came home with it. And then two days later, uh, Magnaflow picked it up did their thing on it, and then they said, we're done. I said, don't even bring it to me. Would you mind just dropping it off at, at Anderson Composites? And they, said, <laughs> no, and they said, no problem. So they just drop it off there, and that's it. Now, I've been getting daily updates from those guys on what they're doing. I just can't share any of it yet. And I hate to be that guy because I just like to talk about the shit because it's some cool stuff. Uh, uh, but it... I'll be able to to show it soon, I believe. I'm I'm not sure if the car is oh, going to Oh, give us a hand. Soon. I mean, you can have, you can guess. It's Anderson Composites. It's carbon fiber stuff. So you can imagine what they're doing to it, you know. Uh it's you know, they've got a look, just go through their catalog, find all the shit they've done to the previous Mustang and go, "Hey, that probably makes sense. Why not do it to a Mach 1?" There's just there maybe go. one little thing or significant thing <laughs> that is that we can't talk about yet, which is which is cool. I will say it's been highly requested, and Anderson is taking care of it. That's all I can say on that. So that's kind of a douchey move, given that kind of teaser. But that's where we are with this thing. 
Uh, so now I'm going to tell you about Geico. Uh, whether you own your home or rent your home, we know it can be a lot of hard work. But you know it's easy bundling your policies with Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. And that's a good thing because you already have so much to do around your home already. So just go to Geico.com and get a quote and see how much you could save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. Uh, the last thing I just want to touch on real quick, just in automotive news, is uh, Subaru BRZ. Uh, fun little car, but it seemed like it was kind of underpowered previously. The new one is is has been announced. They've uh, they've they've upped it a little bit from from the uh, from the two liter engine to the two point four liter engine. It gets a little bump in horsepower. It gets a little bump in. Uh, in torque, you get some revised suspension. It's overall, it's faster. It's more compliant. It's it's filling in the the gap. It's turning into a really kind of fun little little sports car. It's still naturally aspirated, so there's some opportunities in the aftermarket there, uh, which is uh, which is good, which is kind of fun. Still lightweight, still affordably priced, in my opinion. Um. It's uh you know it's got the newest tech the infotainment system eight inch touchscreen all the all the cool stuff uh, so definitely want to want to check that out um cool anyway uh, you might want to check that I think we're gonna I think we're pretty much going to uh, wrap things up here are we missing anything no I'm just missing race fuel for my car. So. Just trying to get some uh, hands on some race fuel. That's all. Getting some race fuel for the uh, for the charger. That well, that's it all. I'm right here. Get it to me as quick as possible. I need to go to the grocery store. <laughs> 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 take, take that thing out there. It'll be a beast. Well, uh, check out. Uh, look for Goldberg's Garage on um, on uh, on YouTube, and we will. Uh, We'll get some updates on all of those things. So uh, uh, appreciate it. And by the way, my knee's fine, you prick. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Well, we we talked about it a little bit ahead of time, so uh, I didn't get uh, too much into it. But uh, how's Gage? A little. He's, uh, he, he's he, he's out of his football game this week, and so I will take it out on Bobby Lashley the next time I see him. But yes, he's healing up. He's healing up. But yeah, he'll be missing the game this week. It was, uh, he did a good job and, uh, hopefully, uh, everybody's healing up and, uh, you know, we don't want, we saw you on, uh, we saw you on WWE social media, limping around, a little irritated, <laughs> little, yeah. it's all good, it's uh, all good. All right. Well, we'll get updates as we get a little bit closer to when, uh, when the, when the punishment's going to be handed out. Oh, Yes. Uh, all right, guys. Thanks so much for giving us a follow. Follow uh, uh, Goldberg and Goldberg Garage on, on Twitter, Goldberg95, Goldberg's Garage on Instagram. Again, that YouTube channel. Follow me at Motorator on uh, on all the social medias. And uh, getting a little bit closer with uh, with Bravago and uh, Goldberg's Garage. He's got his, uh, he's got his, his merch going nope. on. Uh, I believe there's a link on your Instagram account where you can buy the shirts. So check that out. Yes, sir. A little bit closer on the Bravago stuff. I'm, I'm hoping toward the uh, the end of September uh, we'll have that up and running on uh, on the website and be able to ship that out to you guys. So uh, fun stuff, fun stuff. So next week, maybe we'll talk with uh, Alistair as well. Until next time, uh, keep the air and the spare and the bag and the wheel. Boom, boom. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. Pluto TV is playing the biggest movies every night this summer for free. 
Watch hit movies like The Matrix, G.I. Joe Retaliation, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Scary Movie, Runaway Bride, and more all summer long. Check out the biggest stars like The Rock, Keanu Reeves, Tom Cruise, Julia Roberts, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and more. Plus, Pluto TV has hundreds of free TV channels in English and Spanish featuring TV shows, news, sports, comedy, and more all for free. Download the free Pluto TV app on your favorite streaming device, including Android and Apple smartphones. Pluto TV. Drop in. Watch free.